I'm Ryan Messick from The Pop Culturist, and this is our review of PlayStation VR. Now, PlayStation VR has been in households for about 15 days now, so we thought it'd be a good way to, you know, wait a little bit, sit down, get as much time with it as we can before we start reviewing and discussing. In the gaming industry, something that gets thrown around a lot is the term uh, innovative or game-changing. It's something that every second game claims to be game-changing in some way. However, the only thing that I've found to be truly game-changing is, in fact, PlayStation VR. But let's get into the system of it, system itself. So the headset is pretty straightforward. It, uh, as I'm sure you've seen in many videos, slides at the back, easy locks in, spin the wheel, locks it on your head, slides backwards and forwards. Now, this is truly the most comfortable VR headset I have ever used. Now, I've been lucky enough to use a handful of different ones, including, including the Vive, including the Oculus, uh, and this is by far the comfiest. Now, compared to the others, this sits on the crown of your head with a lot of the weight being absorbed here at the top, rather than being all solely in the front with it essentially strapped to your face. So it's it gives a couple benefits. One, it's easier to wear for longer periods of time. You're not feeling that stress on your face. And it allows me to wear my glasses while using the headset, which is amazing because as a pretty blind man without my glasses, even if that screen was any closer to my face, I would not be able to see it. Speaking of the screen itself, so the screen, as everybody knows, is just a 1080p screen. Now, with the, comparatively to the Vive and the Oculus, uh, they do have two screens, equating to about 1200 or something uh, p. So, so it is notice those are noticeably better resolutions compared to this. It can be noticed in some in some places, in some ways. Like you'll notice that it is uh, not quite as sharp as uh, your regular TV, but that also comes from having a screen really close to your face as well. Regardless, like if you were to sit, you know, good 10 centimeters away from your TV, you would see the exact same thing regardless. What I have found with my now 15 days approximately of spending the position VR, it's not a problem. It is not a problem in the slightest. It's tough because it, it does affect the way you play sometimes, as in sometimes you're like, well, that's kind of a bit shot. Uh, an example would be when we uh, tried the Resident Evil demo uh, for the Lantern, when the at the end of the trailer where the guy gets stabbed in the arm, the blood splurts out and it looks all squarey and not very good. However, once you get super immersed into the game, you simply forget what you're looking at in terms of whether you see that screen door effect, whether you sort of see that distance it blows you away. Like you completely forget where you are and that's something that goes away. Now we've, we've, we've been, we've had our hands on a, a ton of games, which we'll get to in a minute. Keeping in line with the headset though, and as, as I'm sure you, everyone is aware, it does work with the PlayStation camera and how it picks up is by the uh, light bars around the face as well as around the back. Uh, and that's what, that's how it does the head tracking, how it, how it picks that up. Um, in terms of the tracking itself, it's, Pretty spot on. Uh, like, it won't be as accurate as, say, the Vive would be, seeing as the Vive is the way it is designed. There are a series of uh, sensors around the room, so it picks up where you are in relative space. No matter where, no matter where you are, a sensor will pick you up. Now, with this solely relying on the light of the headset controllers and the move, if those if those lights are altered in any way, whether they be covered, whether they be obscured, it's gone. When you're using the move controller as your hands, for any reason, if you were to put it behind you, as in like you've turned around and your your bot your physical body is blocking the camera, that hand is gone. It essentially goes meh and crap, and then it doesn't pick it up at all, which is a bummer. But once again, with the way these games are designed, very rarely are you spinning around in circles. Moving along to the move. Now, these are the original PS3 moves. I picked these up for about $8 a piece on uh, eBay when they first announced the PlayStation VR. And after, oh, it's sort of been, yeah, when they announced the release, that would be in March this year. I'm like, oh, there is, there is no way they would re-release these. I'll just buy the same ones and it would be easier. Sony have since released a upgraded version of the Move controllers, 
but they are pretty much the same and just more expensive. So if you if you were looking at the VR headset, I would suggest buying the old PS3 ones. They connect just the same. None of the uh, tracking is altered. The innards are literally identical. It's just a new case. So where they would change the start select button, it would be the options and share buttons. Yeah, these track really, really, well, not really, they really, really well. They track the best they can. Uh, sometimes it does wig out a little bit, but I feel that may be the software itself. Um, I've had no problems and it genuinely helps with the immersion of the games. Having playing with the controller is fun, but you be able to use your hands somewhat really changes the way you play, including like most, the best example of this would have to be Batman Arkham VR. Um, you can play that with the controller, but it is recommended you play with the moves because it does, you can move two hands, you can batarang, you can grapple and batarang at the same time. It's, it's amazing. So any good bit of hardware is literally about as good as its software. Now we've been beautifully spoiled uh, with the PlayStation VR releasing with over 30 games on day one or 30 games and experiences on day one. Now we were also quite spoiled ourselves to be able to get our hands on quite a number of these, um, including the three that you see in front of you, as well as a couple of digital codes that we received. Um, so I thought, let's just go one by one and go through the list and... We'll, we'll, give, we'll give them a quick review as we go. First up is Batman Arkham VR. This is by far one of the greatest virtual reality experiences you will ever, ever have. Now it is only about uh, an hour and a half to two hours long if you just play the story front to back. Uh, however, it is expanded with Riddler trophies, etc. as with every Arkham game. The story itself is pretty solid. I don't want to get too much into it because, you know, it is quite spoiler heavy. And seeing that it is only an hour and a half, it does get to the spoilers pretty quickly. It, it focuses more on a detective Batman style. Comparatively with the Arkham games, previ like previously, there are detective aspects to them. However, it is essentially beat them up. You do fly around the city, punching, kicking your way to uh, the villains. What I really dig about Arkham VR is it is 100% immersive. Uh, there are little subtle things I didn't realize I was doing until afterwards when I was playing. So when you do suit up and you, they physically get you to put the suit on, the gloves, the, the cowl, everything, it, they pop up a mirror and lets you see yourself as Batman and it moves and responds as you do. The second that I saw that mirror, I had a very interesting response. I start, my posture improved. I sort of had very, very superhero stance all of a sudden. And that continued for the rest of the playthrough. <laughs> it's just weird because like, when with the slogan of be the Batman, you feel like you're Batman. It is insane. I played this front to back for two hours without a, without a bit. Like it was, I, I can't praise enough. Rocksteady have done spectacular work with Batman Arkham VR. And if you do plan on picking up the PlayStation VR or you do already have it, I highly suggest you buy it. It's about $25, $30 Australian. And it is one of the best $25, $30 you will spend on this machine. Next up is Job Simulator. Now this is a game that has appeared on uh, Vive and I believe potentially Oculus as well. So it is uh, a known commodity. Like it no, it's known to be a good VR experience. Uh, and that certainly comes across on PlayStation VR as well. It is lighthearted, it is fun, it is addictive and you will have an incredible time. And it is, it's even a great game to watch your friends play. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, you're in uh, the year 2050 and you're, there's robots around you, little old CRT monitors. They give you four cartridges, each for a different job. A chef, a mechanic, a store clerk, and an office worker. So you go in there and you do a series of tasks and you get to play around in this little world. Now where Job Simulator thrives is the game is set up essentially in a, a, one, a one meter by one meter square. Ha having that Having it be that way, it really locks you down in a good way. So everything around you is interactable. You can grab that, you can throw that, you can do this, you can press that button, you can pull the lever. If you want something that is truly interactive, this is probably one of the best games for that because everything is touchable. And because of that, because you, everything is tactile, you become more immersed in that world. You become a part of it and you want to get involved with everything and touch everything. This is my first ever platinum. I, this, out of all the games I've played in my life, it's the Job Simulator is the first one that I've ever actually done, played enough to complete all the trophies. It is a lot of fun. It's one of the first games I got my wife to play. It is absolutely great. 
Next is Here They Lie. This comes from Sony Santa Monica. Uh, and we should say thank you to PlayStation for, for giving us the code for Here They Lie. So we're able to get our hands on it. VR is in such a good place because if you want to create a intense horror experience, virtual reality is the best way to do it. You become involved with it. When you play a horror game, whether it be on your PlayStation or your PC or whatever, because you're looking at a screen, you can look away at any point. You can be distracted by your phone. You can be taken out of the world. You can lose your immersive experience. However, what I found with here, with here they lie as an example, within three minutes, I knew exactly what game it was and I had to actually stop it. The game sort of starts off with you uh, talking to a woman, which was horrifically life-size. Um, it kind of took me off guard because when the game started, I was looking around like four and then boom, there's a big giant person in front of me. Then you walk onto a train, the train gets creepy. As you walk down the train, boom, pitch black, Boom, people, they're looking at you. Boom, they're gone. I'm like, you know what? I'm done. That's. I'll, I'll come back to this game one day. I'll come back. It gave you this in instant feeling of dread and fear and it really nailed that tone. I think that can own, that, that sort of experience can only be put through PlayStation VR because it does give you that extra kick of realism. This is one of the only games that is, in terms of how it moves, is a free roam. Compared to say uh, uh, Batman Arkham VR, which is pretty much point, click the thumb button and you move to that point. Here they lie is free roaming, as in your left stick moves something back, your right pivots as so does your head. For that reason alone, as well as the psychedelic uh, effects and tr things that the world does, this game can lead to motion sickness. Because you can move with the right stick and it does move freely, your body will have that sense that it's moving when it's not and you will want to puke. It's tough and it's going to take a while for developers to narrow it down. Now, it comes with two different settings. It comes with one that is very similar to, as we mentioned at EBF with Resident Evil 7. It kicks in like 45 degree angles, as in, so when you turn with the right stick, it, it pops you there. So re relying on your head movements to move with that. Now, I personally find that a little bit more jarring because like that quick turn actually makes me feel uh, more motion sick. However, you can turn that off and it does give you a very much, a very warning, a very big warning. It's like, hey, if you do this, you may feel more sick. I'm like, yeah, I'll give it a go. And I find the fluid motion a little bit better because my body can process it a bit simpler. Now, at the same time, they don't just allow free movement. It does do this sort of iris effect that closes the view as you move, allowing you to uh, focus on one point. If, you, if anyone has any emotions, that's one of the things they do is they say focus on one point, use that and it, and it helps prevent the sickness. This is really helpful with all my thinking. Like ballet thing as well. As you spin, you focus on that one point. As you spin, you come back to it. Spin, you come back to it. And it helps you stay balanced and uh, not sick. So having that iris thing does help. And it, for me personally, it does make the game a little bit easier to play. But it is a truly uh, horrifying experience. And I really, really enjoyed it. But at the same time, I am hesitant to do an experience like that again. Because it's like the emotional response that I got from the horror games is um, something bizarre. Next up is PlayStation VR World. It's essentially a five gay, uh, five experience tech demo disc from Sony London. Now, if you've ever gone to a convention and had some time with PlayStation VR, these are the experiences you've probably had. Now, they are more fleshed out than, than they were at conventions. Um, I know previously at EB Expo and at PAX, um, I've had my hands on the London Heist. And they, they gave us essentially snapshots of that game. Person VR World exists of five games. It's the London Heist, uh, The Descent, previously known as Into the Deep, VR Luge, Danger Ball, and Scavengers Odyssey. Now, all these games are themselves pretty interesting. The Descent is something very interesting for me because as I do have a uh, fear of the ocean, um, I'm not a big fan of it. I don't like the, the depth. It makes it difficult for me. So... This was a nice way for me to face my fears actually, and sort of get an experience that is as close to what the real life is without getting wet. Once again, this goes to the power of virtual reality. My hands were shaking, I was a little bit sweaty, like my heart was racing. It was an intense experience. I'm glad that I was allowed, able to experience that and sort of not face my, like I'm still not gonna go into a shark tank for real, no way, but it allowed me to somewhat tackle that fear in a safe environment. And I really appreciate that. But the standout on the VR World's disc for me is the London Heist. Uh, to me, it's straight, it felt like the getaway. I love the getaway on PlayStation 2 and I want that series to come back in a big bad way. 
and this gave me that nice bit of a taste. And just something as simple as its music, it really set the scene. Like a Guy Ritchie movie that you were able to play and shoot and do things in. I wanted a longer experience, which is 100% a good thing. The game, it's it's only about, you know, 45 minutes to an hour if you play slowly. It's essentially it's a bunch of set pieces, all involving you sitting down somewhere because they don't want to get you up and moving around. It's a lot of fun. The shooting is pretty accurate. There were times where it would clip out on you, especially when you're doing the actual heist scene. You're standing behind a desk and you have to shoot people. The game sort of confuses itself and thinks that you've gone out of, not out of the play area, but it readjusts where the desk is sitting in real time, depending on where your head is, which is not helpful because you're, you're trying to hide behind the desk so you don't get shot and boom, the desk stop, drops down because it thinks that you're going, you've gone too low and it tries to correct itself. Is that out the best experience on the PlayStation VR world? It's, it's a really good disc to show people what VR is capable of doing and the experiences that it provides. Whether it be someone that, maybe someone's like really into shooting, but with the descent, they get to feel like they're part of a world. Not by interacting with it, even just by witnessing it. It's a definitely powerful experience. One thing with VR, especially with these headsets, is that it is a very solitary experience because you can only essentially see the screen, even though it does, with the impressive power of the breakout box, it does allow for the split, so the screen can show you, uh, people around you what you're seeing. It's still very a solitary, it's still a very solitary experience. That is the key reason why I picked up the game, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. This is once again, another well-known and tested game. So it's expected to be very good and it certainly is. Well, the way it works is you, as the person with the VR headset on, you, you see a briefcase bomb and you have to deactivate it using a set of instructions that your friend, who's watching the TV, where they can see the manual, they t you tell them what you see, they tell you how to deactivate the bomb, that's how it works. You've got a set period of time. If you keep talking to each other, not, you know, nobody explodes. The name pretty much says it all. This game is addictive and fun and intense. Uh, it has the same sort of intense competitiveness slash co-op that I found with Overcooked. Overcooked was, in, it was intense because you're constantly yelling at each other, trying to get things done and it's aggressive and it's competitive and you have the same goal, you're working together, but against each other, it's kind of fun. But with this, I found myself yelling at Dylan. I'm like, there's six wires, two red, three green and a yellow. And he's like, are there any blue ones? I'm like, clearly there's no blue ones. I just straight up said that. And it gets into a nice little argument. Um, but if you know the person really well, it can also go quite smooth. Like then my wife came in and was like, hey, this is what this is what you got to do because she's very logically minded. So I was like, boom, boom, boom. We're able to get that bomb diffused in no time. It is a really good co-op experience, and I do hope that they create more experiences like this for you be able to play with your friends or with your partner or with uh, family because it does help justify the purchase. Especially, to, especially to my wife. I'm like, I bought this thing. It's really expensive. She's like, well, how does like how can we both play it? I'm like, well, here we go. There's an example. Put this on and I'll read the manual. It's a, it's a lot of fun, but we already knew that because as, as I said, tried and tested game. Now, one of the biggest surprises to come out of PlayStation VR is Until Dawn, A Rush of Blood. Now, everyone sort of gave this game crap because it did look like a on-rails shooter using the Until Dawn license inappropriately, essentially. As in, they're like, hey, Until Dawn is an incredible game. Why sully the franchise with... Uh, an on-rail shooter game. This game is amazing. It is so much fun. It is immersive. It is scary. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> it is essentially an on-rail shooter. You sit in a little uh, roller coaster cart as you go around this map and shoot at things. This game doesn't have a lot of the roller coaster parts. It doesn't give you that sort of sickness that you'd get from a lot of roller coaster. It is more of a slower experience that slowly plods you along through the level getting you to, uh, it's to set the atmosphere, to to get your tension up, to get that fear in you. So then when something does charge you, you jump, you, you know, you get the jump scares and you shoot. That also just sets an incredible scene, as I mentioned with the atmosphere. It is one of my favorite experiences on PlayStation VR. Once again, it's $25 in the same price range as Batman. But this is my game that I use when people come in like, hey, can I try for VR? I'm like, yeah, you can. Boom, get a little bit scared, shoot some things. Because we're using the moves, it does allow that interactivity. It's, see, it's, it's novel in the same in the same way that like Wii motes and stuff were, but it feels more responsive in, in, in a great way. Now, if you didn't want to spend any money, of course, like the, the VR itself does come with a demo disc, 
but the Australian demo just does come only with eight games. So if you do have a US PlayStation account, I do suggest you go and get the US demo disc. It's free on the store and it'll give you 18 games compared to the eight that we get. So a couple of other different experiences you'll get, you'll get the kitchen demo, which is the uh, tech demo for Resident Evil 7, which is awesome. Thumper, which is this uh, music violence rhythm game, which is you're going down a track with a little beetle and you're a spawn with the world. Tumble VR, I think it is, where you get to essentially stack towers with blocks. It's quite simple, it's intuitive, it's a lot of fun. And one that also allowed me to tackle a fear was a Valkyrie. Now we do have a copy of the game on its way, so any have been uh, once again enough, uh, nice enough to send us a copy of it for uh, review and just for it, well, our thoughts. Now, because I do have a crippling fear of space. For me, space, it's that weird fear of forever falling. It's like kind of the same as the ocean, I guess. So it was kind of a lot of fun to be in that fighter jet and fly around. I'm really excited to play this game because it does show a bigger, grander experience. OE Valkyrie is one of the only uh, fully priced titles coming in at around 70 to $80. So I'm, I'm curious on how it justifies itself as a big full price title. From what I've experienced with the demo, it is pretty great. And that's our review of the PlayStation VR. Now, a couple questions that I, I went, when I went into this review is what I wanted to think about. Is this game breaking technology? Will this change how we play games? Yes. Yes, it will. Granted, I've not played it every day since I've bought it. I've played it most days and I certainly love the experience that it gives me. It gives me a new way to play that isn't sitting on my couch playing a controller. Don't get me wrong, it won't replace my TV, but I have tried the cinematic mode. I've been recently been playing a little bit of Skyrim Special Edition with it as my wife wanted to watch something on Netflix. So I've been playing Skyrim with this on and it helps that way as well. Like it, it doesn't give you the same full world experience that you get with the, with the VR made titles, but it does give you a sense of scale. Like when I approach a castle or like a, a tomb or something in uh, Skyrim, it looks bigger, it looks grander. It's a great way to play. Regardless of the resolution being lesser than its competitors, I do think it is a great experience. It looks just fine. I'm yet to have any massive frame rate drops. All the games seem to run pretty smooth for me. This is 100% worth the $550 that I paid for it. I was always concerned whether I would have to justify my spend. Um, I think just by having it and playing it and using the software that, that we have, um, the software that's available, it is 100% worth my dollars. Now, of course, there are room to improvement. Obviously, I would like, with the next version, uh, I would like to see uh, an improved screen. I would potentially like to see an uh, upgraded camera and roof controllers to assist with that tracking, or potentially finding a way to have a camera behind you to allow you to get that full uh, 360 motion. I'm not sure how that'd be integrated, but I, that would be an interesting idea as well. I'm really curious to see how the PlayStation Pro will assist with the PlayStation VR in terms of that extra horsepower, giving it that extra potential frame rate boost, which will make it a smoother experience, even though it's pretty smooth already. It will also help create a bigger and better world. I love PlayStation VR. I am 100% an advocate. Now, this is the tip of the sword. So this is this is very early days VR. It is not, not baby's first VR, but it's the most easiest way for you to get a proper VR experience in your house. Now, if you do have the disposable income and you do wish to purchase it, I would highly recommend it. I would, if I was to give this a rating out of 10, I would give it a good solid nine. I've loved it. I've had a great time with it. There are some slight downsides, but they're downsides that I that I think are future upgrades. Um, and all I'm hoping for is that Sony continue to support this headset, continue to make quality software for this, um, and that way we'll be able to keep it for, the, for years to come. And in a, in a good couple of years, hopefully my son, if, if it's still supported, my son can try it as well. And he can also experience this incredible new way to play games. I'm Ryan Betson. This is the PlayStation VR review. Comment below. Let us know what you think. Thank you very much.